Today, the doctor is in. Most often, people think that radiation therapy is only for the treatment of cancer. However, there are a, a few non-cancerous diseases that benefit from radiation treatment. Dr. Scott Ackerman is one of the first coast leading oncologists. He is joining us today to talk about some of these conditions that could benefit from radiation treatment. Dr. Ackerman, as always, we appreciate your you, perspective Jason. and insight. So, I always thought that radiation was just for cancer treatment, but it really goes beyond that. What else do you treat with radiation? So traditional cancer treatments like chemotherapy and radiation have many uses and most of the time they're used for cancer but also for other diseases. For instance, chemotherapy we use for people with certain bone marrow diseases that aren't necessarily cancerous. We use it also on patients that have certain immunological disorders, autoimmune disorders, those sort of things uh, that are not cancerous. And also radiation is used for some non-cancerous conditions. To name a few, and we'll, we'll go through them at greater length today. Uh, Graves' disease, which is a disease of the thyroid gland. Keloids, which are scars that overgrow. Uh, Deputrin's disease, which is a, pr a problem with the hand, a benign condition of the tendons of the hand. And also some benign tumors. We, we treat benign tumors of the brain and other benign tumors in the body and with some, radiation. Some of these conditions are more common than people may think. They're, they're right. uh, uh, pretty prevalent, some of them. Let's start out with Graves' disease. What exactly is Graves' disease and how do you treat that? So Graves' disease is also known as hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism means that the thyroid gland, which is in the neck, produces too much thyroid hormone or, or thyroxin. Um, and so when that happens, we think the etiology of it is that it's an autoimmune disease and the thyroid just keeps on pumping out thyroid hormone and our, we get nervous and we get heart palpitations. It could lead to all sorts of problems. So it's typically treated initially with some medication, but at best the medication works for a year or two. Sometimes the thyroid grows very large. You may have seen people with a goiter. They could be hyperthyroid and have a goiter. That's sometimes removed surgically when it's big like that. But also we can use radiation to treat that Graves' disease. And we do it in the form of a pill, a pill called radioactive iodine. Um, iodine-131 is the pill. And when we eat, ingest iodine in our diet, and we, it's in the salt that we mm -hmm. eat, iodized salt, all the iodine that we ingest goes to our thyroid gland to be used to produce thyroxin, uh, thyroid hormone. And so it's all incorporated into the thyroid gland. So vir virtually all of it that we ingest, anything else we, gets excreted out, but it's not really used anywhere else in the body but the thyroid gland. So if we can take that iodine and make it radioactive, which we can, and then give it to a patient in the form of a pill, they'll ingest the pill, the pill will go to the thyroid gland, and as it gets incorporated into the thyroid gland to produce the thyroxin, that radiation will be sitting in the thyroid gland, and that will ablate mm -hmm. uh, the thyroid gland and, and, and make it so the thyroid gland doesn't produce any more thyroid hormone because it'll just um, necrose it or it'll, just, it'll scar um, in the neck. Okay, another one that, and this is, um, we know people that have this, keloids. What are keloids, and how do you treat a keloid then with re radiation? Well, keloids are when you have a scar that overgrows, and so sometimes people have a tattoo, and that actually uh, breaks the skin, and there'll be a scar that overgrows on that. Sometimes people have surgery, and the scar overgrows too much. And what happens is these scars overgrow so much that it could be painful, and it could be disfiguring, it typically happens to people that are either African American or people of Mediterranean descent, you know, more often than those people, but anyone can get a keloid. And we use radiation, external radiation like we use for cancer, to stop the growth of this uh, t uh, tissue in the scar. We have the scar removed surgically, and then we give just a few small doses of radiation to that scar area, and that inhibits the tissue from overgrowing. Okay, and then Deputrin's disease. What, and I got that right. That's, that's, good. that's a long yeah. word with a lot of L's. <laughs> so <laughs> right. what is Deputrin's disease? Lots of U's and Y's. Right, yeah, I know, a little right. confusing. <laughs> so you probably met someone with this condition but didn't know, you, you didn't know what it was called. And so Deputrin's contracture affects the layer of tissue in the palm. And typically it happens in people in their 50s. It begins then and then it progresses through life. And, it's, and it starts initially as a small nodule in the hand and the nodule then gets thicker and harder and it causes contraction of the fingers. And so you may have seen some older people uh, where, where they can't open their hand all the way. There's some nice pictures uh, there to, to see. Mm -hmm. So if we catch, and when it gets that bad where you can't open your hand, that would have to be uh, released surgically. But early on, when you first develop the nodule, small doses of radiation can prevent that nodule from progressing into a situation where you, where you have this, per, this, this permanent contracture of the hand. Yeah. 
And when you think about um, radiation and you think about how that is administered to cancer patients, it's very different than what we're talking about with these three conditions. I mean, how are these different in, in the treatment and, um, you know, as you, you would use radiation, I guess the way you think it would be used is not typically how it would be used for these conditions. Well, all the time, every time we use radiation for a patient, whether it's a cancerous condition or a benign condition, the treatment's personalized for the patient's tumor, their condition, and their overall health. But the method of delivering the radiation for benign diseases is the same as it is for malignant diseases. We use ingested isotopes for malignant diseases uh, like um, thyroid cancer. We use radiation beam uh, for skin cancers and for these uh, the conditions of the, these benign conditions of the skin. The main difference between malignant conditions and benign conditions with radiation is the amount of radiation that we that we that we use much less. All right, Dr. Ackerman, thank you as always for being here. Thank we appreciate you, your, your time and your perspective and your expertise, especially as an oncologist. We also like to thank Dr. Ackerman, of course, for coming out and sponsoring this. For all of the good advice, as always, for questions regarding today's topic, any questions that you may have, you can connect with Dr. Ackerman on Facebook by visiting facebook.com forward slash First Coast Oncology.